September 28th, 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting. So moved. You second here. You're making a motion? Mission, I apologize, sorry. Yeah, and Jim second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Peter. I mean, Jim. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, no. Motion to approve the minutes of October 21st, 2023 workshop meeting. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Uh, That's a bit long without saying Peter. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of October 26, 2023, Board of Supervisors meeting. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Uh, Jim. Motion to approve the meetings of <laughs> the minutes of the November 11th, 2023, workshop meeting, which is not yet complete. Yeah. So we're going to hold on that. Right. Um, treasurer's report, nothing unusual to report. Well, maybe this is a little bit unusual. Um, there were bills that were sent out in October, October 17th bills, which were mailed on the 18th that haven't been received by um, the vendors. So if you look at this month's bills, you may see that those bills were reissued next month. They have been properly accounted for, canceled, et cetera, within our uh, QuickBook system. So if you see duplicates, it's because they just weren't received and everyone is uh, getting back to me in a timely fashion. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit distressing. Yeah, but we have a lot of good people that are, that politely calls. Some people did charge us um, a service charge. I pulled those individuals and they waived it as far as I know. We're just waiting for feedback, but everyone's been very polite about that. Um, next item is a, a motion to approve payments of the bills for November, 2023. Second. Irene. Hi. Jim. I apologize. I do speak fast. And if anyone needs me to slow down, please let me know. Just flag me down. I'm a little bit under the weather, and so it's Chuck. So we want to go home. We want to go home and have some soup. So um, public comments. If you'd like to address the board, please come up to the podium and uh, identify yourself. There's a gentleman here that wanted to speak. Public comments. I'm on the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. So we're going to move on since there's no public comments. Anything on um, on Zoom? Nope, nothing. Okay, thank you. First item for discussion is a 2024 proposed budget. This was reviewed in depth, line by line, at the November workshop meeting. We actually did it in about an hour and a half, which wasn't too bad. Uh, once the budget is finalized, uh, we'll have to make the motion which will be tonight to accept and advertise the budget and make it available for public ins inspection. It's currently available on Google Drive, is that correct? It's not accepted, yes. Okay, once it is accepted, it will be available on Google Drive for anyone who'd like to view it there. To be, and we keep a hard copy here. Okay. It must be advertised at least 20 days before the final budget is adopted, and it must be adopted by December 31st. So do I have to make it two separate motions or one motion? Can I accept and, and advertise in one motion? Yes. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to accept the 2024 proposed budget and advertise it. In the right In the right In the right region. Thank you. Cool. Oh, Irene. I, Jim. I must tell you, I'm not, I wasn't completely surprised with the budget, but. Since I'm not going to be here anymore, and I know Peter was, I'll wait here.
Next item is the municipal tax sheet. We need to let the Berks County Treasurer's Office know our tax rates for real estate, street light, and also sewer levy. There's been no changes since last year. So if you just want to say the tax rate and the street light rate. I don't have them. So the street, the tax, the village is 2.75. The street light is 0.65, which is 65 cents. And the sewer levy is $50. Thank you, so and again, that has not changed since last year. Second. What? No, I didn't make the motion yet. Oh, okay. So I need to make the motion to have myself to sign and complete the municipal tax sheet. Second. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item is Act 537. I would ask Joe Alvarez to make some changes to the special study. It would increase packing fees and other fees if turning the firm on will review. First developer is working on an agreement with the WSA. Should we include a clause that says the party shall reevaluate the arrangement with us if and when we construct a new public sewer system connected with the uh, WSA system? Um, do you, either one of you have any comments to updates for us? Uh, yeah, not in order to lunch. That's okay. Uh, just kind of an update uh, on the special study plan. Um, currently, we're awaiting some final costs from WSA for sewer treatment plant improvements. Commentary with me, uh, happy fee that I'll incorporate into the final, the final document. Um, once that's finalized, uh, I'll go back and executive summary, which typically goes in the beginning of the document. Um, I'd like to share that with your solicitor so he can take a look at it. And if uh, Mr. Hess would like to see a copy, I'd like to share that with them as well. Uh, that's up to you guys, but uh, I'm sure. glad to share the study and get any comments that we possibly can. We would incorporate those final comments into the final draft of the special study. And then I uh, asked the board to approve that final document. Okay. Uh, we release it for public comment. And there's a 30 day public comment period that is uh, in accordance with the uh, compliance schedule sent to DEP. We're supposed to be having that meeting in November, but because of some of the cost and, and problems that we've run into with the June tech work. Uh, I think we're going to try and fund that until January. Um, that shouldn't really be a problem uh, because once the public comments are received and finally adopted by the board, we still make the more deadline of 2024 for the adoption of that special study. Um, so that's really where we're at with the, with the 537 plan. It is moving ahead. I'd say, you know, I could finish it in a week once I have all the information and then get it over to uh, to Colin and Chuck. But then I have a, a look at it. And then, like I said, if the board could make an approval, we could get it out for public comment. Thank you. And that was just altering at the end that narrative that you can skip. That was, that was really the nuts and bolts of it for me. Yeah, for the yeah. most part. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that. We've identified going through the study, and Peter brought up some concerns that uh, I will add to the end of the document. Like I said, once once I have all that information, I can write the executive summary, which you know, is like a page or two. Uh, but certainly, we'd like to be able to comment for his his opinion, uh, and then factor in any comments he has. Thank you. Now, like, on the next I'll just I'll the So the, the short story even for this that first does not want to wait for township to implement sewer for the construction of this development. Mm -hmm. So he has elected to proceed with the development in anticipation of connecting with WSA's existing collection system. Uh, so those parties are are signing an agreement, a, a capping fee agreement for that connection. The, the question 
I guess, is whether the township wants to request that the parties include language in their connection agreement that they reevaluate the arrangement once and if the township has public sewer because the large majority of those houses are in our township and therefore they could be paying customers <clears throat> if you know if we ultimately implement sewer. Yes. So we, yeah, I mean it's just we'll have, yeah. more, we'll have a larger customer base and make makes sense yeah. just to just to make that house. Can some crop be included in that huh? Yes, some crop can also be included. Okay, so I will uh, I'll reach out to WCA's council and ask for that to be put in the agreement. Uh, we're not we're not part of the agreement, so we can't require it, but it's hopefully it it's, hopefully you'll do it as courtesy. How many EDUs is he looking at? Well, it's one one EDU per house. I think the development is sixty seven units, so presumably somewhere between sixty seven and sixty eight EDU in total. Um, well, my, my, my understanding is that the computer plant still has capacity for, to, to handle our Act 537. Okay. It's close, but, but my understanding yeah. is that capacity is still in there. And our, our residents are going to remain seeing single family homes for the most part. Yeah. yeah. There's 60 of these remaining. A few are in Hoyleburg. Yeah. And, for a proper, but if 60 something of those, the majority, right the large majority yeah. of, the, of the house. Okay. I guess that brings up some concern how uh, a township would take flow in from a different township without having a municipal vote. Mr. Hurst called me a couple of weeks ago to discuss what his proposal was. Caution and not one in high grade sewer at a bar. Those homes that are really in a bar. So I guess he's he's looking into that. I'm not sure where he well, is. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's only an issue if the township ultimately has those residents customers, right? Because they're in it, they'll, they'll be paying authority under the current proposal. I'm not sure how long without and going back and looking at the, the regulation. I was always under the I, I always thought that you just couldn't take any sewer unit from into the township unless you have this. Could be wrong on that. He said he was going to look into it with his current see where that whole thing would end. What's that? As it went Marion. Well, it's authority. Well, it's so the, the, the ask with respect to the first development just keeps the township's option open. Yes, it, if it ultimately wants those residents that, as customers, it may need to create an authority. But again, it just it keeps the option open by potentially expanding the customer base, which is ideal because the more people paying, the more money you have to update and maintain the system. No doubt. All right, are we okay to move on then? I think so. Okay, thank you. Uh, sewage management program, we got the final draft of the old card. It needs to be adopted by 2023 dash 20. We have that. Right. So I have that resolution here tonight, which just memorializes the fact that the township is updating and adopting and amending. It or it's programs can What's that? Does that require Peter's permission? Or your or your best. Uh, which just, you know, the, the purpose of updating the old program guidebook was to be consistent with how we've amended the ordinance, just to let after presidents know that upper hall we're now required to those, yeah. you know, observe, yeah. observe the system. So you can uh, make a motion to adopt that. Um, I'll make the motion then to adopt the resolution 2023, which updates the old guidance booklet. Second. Oh, uh, Irene, aye. Jim, aye. 
Next item is a 2023. Okay. No, oh, we just had a couple. Of no, things. no, sure. Absolutely, sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, two. Once now that the guidance doc document is uh, adopted, we would certainly move forward with drafting letters to the homeowners. Uh, our recommendation would be that the letters coming from the township, not, not us as an engineer, because I think uh, our letter may just wind up in the trash at the end if it's coming from the township. We would open it. Uh, I would like to share the draft letter with, with uh, the solicitor so that he can get a look at it because there's some inconsistency in the past. We want to make sure that we're presenting this consistent with the guidance booklet. Uh, and we, we would be able to complete that next week. Uh, also, we're looking to send a, a letter out to uh, those pumping companies that already serve Marion Township just to try and give them a heads up. Now, that letter would come from Hydro Care because, uh, you know, be separate from the township. And we would give them some guidance on getting into the Terror Tracker website and submitting forms electronically. Uh, once those two Least I think we, we're ready to uh, you know register companies right now through Terror Tracker, and uh, everything's ready to go as far as that's concerned. Um, another part of the sewer management program then would be to have a public meeting separate from the 537 plan meeting, but a public meeting, uh, an educational meeting to help those folks in, in areas one and two understand the best way to take care of their online systems. It's pretty simple, straightforward. It really doesn't talk about the sewer management program so much as, you know, don't dump oil and grease down, down into your drain and expect your online system to handle it. You know, some do's and don'ts for operation and maintaining the system. Uh, but we would like to have that meeting sometime in January, maybe later January to share with those folks. Um, and then uh, at completion of the annual report in March. So it looks like the sewer management program is off and running. We're looking to uh, get those pumpers uh, registered on the character website. And I think it should go pretty soon. Did you? I've been getting a lot of phone calls from residents and pumpers. Yeah, so certainly you can send uh, the pumpers down our way. Okay. Any phone calls and we'll help them get registered. Um, as far as homeowners, if there's any concerns, you can also send them down. They mostly just want to know the process since they, they're trying to reach out and can't get through. Can't get on his website. <laughs> yeah, please send them down our office and help them understand. It's pretty much been explained to them. They're fine with that. They just are like, yes. Yes. Yeah, I can understand. It's been a yeah. process. It's been a big Yeah, we look for you. Did, did you receive the affidavit at the small hauler that required to sign? Yes, I did. And we'll have, we have that incorporated oh, into the registration okay. process. I think it uh, should be pretty cool. Um, I guess it's just a housekeeping question. Along with the information that Joe's going to be sending out, Sue, I just asked Melissa, at a previous meeting, we had talked about uh, getting out notice to the residents about the rainbow calling. We just include that with that letter. So um, we just have to get pricing on printing up a card so residents can return it to us. Do we use the out previously or is it JDM? We use JDM for letters, yeah. but I, we can check for pricing yeah. for both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay as well. So we'll include that this so week. We can get data back from residents and start that process so that can leave the messages for the robocalls since we have that system in place. Oh, but just here tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you, Jim. You can see up there, so that's some more stuff. So, I think it's <laughs> So, thank you. All right, so I think it's scheduling another meeting then for just the septic issue itself. So, well, I guess when Peter gets back, we'll have to talk, and then we'll have to find out if there's availability at the schools as well. Great. Uh, the next item is the 2023 LSA statewide program. And this is the PA grant uh, program. Uh, Melissa and Kimberly are working together to prepare and submit an application for, for the Tulsa Hopkins Police Department and the Emergency Management Coordinator for Supplies. John is working on obtaining letters of support and 
students agreements. Um, resolution 2023-6 is for the Silk Hawkins Police Department request. And resolution 2023-7 is for the emergency management equipment request. So I'm going to make those motions. All right, I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2023-6. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Aye. Jim. Aye. And I'll make another motion to adopt resolution 2023 7. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you both for working on those. I'm crossing my fingers. It would be a lot of welcome uh, funding for a lot of equipment that we both need. Um, the next item is a town hall meeting that Joe just mentioned before. And we'll be trying to get that scheduled for January. Uh, and then hopefully it'll be when everything's complete the special study and all the fees are known. We'll be able to have a really good conversation uh, with the public. So thank you again. Really, did you have anything to say about the grants? I think the main thing to uh, say is that um, DCED is aware that these grant applications are coming, which is great. And the big push truly is for letters of support. Again, to see the amount of people who will benefit or you see them in the case of the EMC mm -hmm. is critical. And Melissa is really helping coordinate get those those letters as much as possible for the 30th. Mm -hmm. So again, we're right on track for 30th in terms of submitting everything. Thank you. So we have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Like, so much. We'll speak. We always enjoy having you. Thank you. I guess have a great Thanksgiving. We don't see you. Well, it's not. We see you. Excellent gift. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great Thanksgiving. Hey, yeah, Mother It's going to be. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful. Great resources. I saw. Thank you. Thank you. I guess on that note, uh, Jim has unfortunately given us a uh, letter of resignation. It was received on November third, effective November twenty seventh, and we have forty five days to accept the resignation and thirty days from November twenty seventh to appoint a new board. Oh, okay. Quick correction. Uh, it's going to correct me. Yep. You have 30 days from the date you accepted our information, not from the 27th. Thank you. I apologize. Please go with what Colin just said. And as it would be very awkward for Jim to accept his own resignation at a meeting, we will be deferring his letter of, ex letter of resignation and acceptance until the December meeting. Okay. Uh, next item is the road occupancy permit ordinance amendments. This is uh, amendment number 2023-2. It has been advertised and needs to be approved. A resolution is needed to set the fees. All right, so I have, a, I have a copy of the ordinance with, with me here tonight. Um, as we stated, the potential enactment was advertised and ready to go on second. Uh, the, the purpose of the ordinance is just to prepare the township for a potential uh, broadband project okay. that may or may not come through. A lot of these products are popping up in the county because they've been funded by uh, American Supernova. Mm -hmm. So tonight it's just a, a motion to approve the amendments, is that correct? Yeah, yes, a, a motion to enact the, or, the ordinance which repeals the prior mm -hmm. opening ordinance and replaces it. Which... I'll make the motion then to enact and approve the Amendments of 2023 2 Is that correct, Grayson? Yeah, yes. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Oh, I'm reading. Uh, Jim. I, so you, you do have the, the, the permit piece resolution as well. I, I, I don't, we don't, we don't have a, we don't have a permit piece resolution, but I'm saying that we have a permit the resolution on the books, right? Yes. So we, um, Use ten dot fees and doesn't say right. if the if the if the board wants me to prepare a fee resolution for this ordinance, they can. Alternatively, I would recommend that we try to 
adopt the resolution plan for all fees in the yeah. plan. Yeah. I, I would say run with the existing PennDOT fee schedule because your ordinance references yes. that. Yes. Yes. But sound exactly right. You know, the fee schedule is yeah. not only confusing, yes. overall, it's very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so you. Just take that a look. Yes, go well, So, this, so just, just to be clear, this ordinance gives the township the right to to adopt a new resolution and increase the fees if it wants. Right. It doesn't have to be that. We already have right. three resolutions that incorporate ten dollars fees, but it does have that length if it wants. Right, but we need to review all of our fees. So mm -hmm. we're going we're to hold up on item number nine right now. Okay. All right. Next item for discussion is the proposed short-term rental ordinance. A draft has been prepared. Permit application and rental inspection checklist must be prepared with crafts, and a resolution is also needed to set the fees. Anything further on that? I don't have any updates right now. Thank you. Um, the proposed long-term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Um, I did not get a chance to review that email from crafts. There's um, it's not when you do, that's fine. It's Richland, Burns, because those were the most recent. And then okay. Lower Heidelberg, because that yeah. have to, they have to. So, okay, okay. so we're still on the review, I found them with. Just give myself a note. Um, I'm almost afraid to say the next item. Stone Croft Village Deep Open Space Lot 215, section number eight, which was mistakenly conveyed to Stone Croft HRA. Any further updates? Yeah, I had, sent, I had sent an email out. Okay. Um, I looked. So when that originally came in in January of this year, we only, and I read the HRA, only had plan exhibits. And at the, about the same time, the developer recorded a deed legal description and those plan exhibits. So when I went back and looked at what was recorded, it did acknowledge that open space number eight wasn't right away. And that was the key. Uh, you know, the HOA can own that property, but it is subject to obviously the right of way that the township has along with Penn Boulevard. So that issue has resolved itself. So they they understand everything. Yes, so and I got an email good. back from the mm -hmm. HOA president. Okay. She was happy and appreciated the second look, and I actually sent her all the documents um, so that they would have for their records and file. Thank you very much for that. So that can come off. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Making progress. All right. The next item is the emergency management coordinator report. Tom's not present. I don't think he has anything else more to update. He's anxiously waiting to know what comes through the LSA grant, but um, he's been completing more courses that he needs to have to continue to uh, serve the community in that position. Um, we need to adopt. The next item is the adopt the hazard vulnerability assessment and mitigation plan resolution. That's 2023 deadline. And that's a county level document that we all do is very complete. And so I believe he's completed that, correct? Okay. Um, and nothing really changes with that for the most part. Um, so I'll make a motion to adopt the, the uh, resolution 2023 9 Second. Roll call. I agree. Aye. Jim. Aye. Aye. All right. No, don't call because you're doing your job. We're just glad you're safe and you're here with us. Yeah. Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, you put the gold in there. Look. This is you. It is. Mm -hmm. All right, the next item is the preview dairy uh, operation letter of credit request. The balance is $40,322.88. The request has been made to release in the full. Any issues with that? No, I had provided a letter sent out yesterday. Um, basically just indicating they have in essence closed out the project and that the NBDS permits been closed out with the conservation district. 
The township has received uh, an as built plan that was deemed acceptable. And I can report that all the required improvements and stabilization have been completed. So at this time, I consider that project completed and the financial security can be released back to the owners. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and make a motion then to um, release the letter of credit for the fee Jerry operation for the remaining balance of $40,222.88. Okay. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jen. Aye. All right, next item is the culverts and related site improvements on Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South. Uh, the paving and dive rail improvements on Riker Road. Everything is currently completed. The motion was made at last month's meeting to accept change order number two and execute a payment of $290,761.80 to construction um, CMS. Mm -hmm. are, uh, and retain the 5% for $28,002.57. Yeah, just an update on that. So, Monday, I'm going to be here in the township, meet with the room master, take a look at Sheridan Drive South uh, with regard to paving and drainage improvements for a project next year. After we conclude there, I'd like to go around and visit each of the culvert sites, make sure everything is holding up, you know, fine and dandy. There were a couple of tentative punch list items that were given to the contractor. I believe he had completed those, but I need to confirm that. Once that is done and the roadmaster and I feel everything is, is acceptable, then the contract I'll notify the contractor to submit his final pay application for that okay. remaining retainage. And then that project will be completed. Hallelujah. Wonderful. So yeah. just an update on that. Excellent. How are you planning on for Sheridan Road? Sheridan yeah, yeah. That place with fuels money coming in next year. Oh, yes, I think you're balanced because yeah. you couldn't use the culvert money. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's no work to do anything. Yeah, there, there is not. There is not. Yeah. 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 But and I were going to get there, but we didn't, and, and we're having an early meeting this month, so it gets further uh, to prep this. Yeah. And then, no, it's it's just like reached. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't use it. Yeah. And that one not Yeah. And your next agenda item on the guide rails, I do not have an update at this time. Okay. All right. I'll just mention it then. Guide rails. Um, Chuck suggested that we prioritize William Penn Boulevard for this year, Hickory Road, Bollinger Road for talk for next year. And we'll get us the estimate when you can get that to us. And uh, uh, we'll be able to determine if it needs to be publicly bid. Yeah, the key there on. William has apparently a gas main there. So I got to get that, do a PA1 call, get that marked so we can see where it's at. Once that's marked, I'll solicit three guide rail contractors out on site and get them to submit proposals for replacing the guide rail there. The next item is the pins out notice of public plans display. Uh, this is for Route 419 bridge replacements. It's in Wilmington, but it affects traffic in our area as well. It says that there's a website that you could look at, up on anyway. It's all about all the um, stuff that's going on within the county. So, all right, the next two items Bollinger Road, the hill overflow matter, and the agreements. I'm going to defer any further comments um, as we've not had any uh, further updates, as well as uh, having this discussed in executive committee. Um, the next item is a 2024 road project. So, Chuck? Yeah, that again is, is what I mentioned about Sheridan Road. So, we, we jumped ahead. <laughs> All right. So, the road group suggests looking at Sheridan, uh, excuse me, Sheridan Road South from Mullion Penn to Lebanon County, Sheridan Road North from Mullion Penn to School Road, and Southford Road from Winter Stone. So, Chuck, do, you... do we want to look at all four of those with the possibility of getting them completed next year? Yes, okay. we want to look at everything okay. so we understand what costs and what needs yep. we have. To and, and that's what we're yeah. scheduled to do Monday, take a look at things. Yeah. And uh, then we'll prepare some cost estimates to see if it aligns with uh, your budget and or the available liquid fuel funds. Okay. And I guess, Chuck, I'll be taking point on this since we're losing Jim and we don't know when we're going to 
have another supervisor and in Peter's availability sometimes he's he's out of the area so if you need me give me okay. one please yeah um I know um uh, Deep has a big interest in it as well and so I'd, I'd like to understand and learn what the process oh, is okay so that when we move forward um and we're, if we're able to do other projects down the road on um, that I've become a little bit more familiar so um and I guess the process from my understanding is you help us understand what the degree of work needs to get done. We right. contact our PennDOT representative and then we could go um, further from there. Yeah, so, you know, Monday when we take a look at these roads, we'll, we'll generate some, some diagrams, figures yeah. showing the limits and some cost estimates of what we anticipate it will take. Again, to address, I think there's drainage problems along these roads that in some areas contributes to the advanced deterioration of the pavement. So we want to be doing, you know, addressing drainage as part of the paving project. So then we'll have some budgetary numbers for your consideration. Okay. And if that aligns again with your budget um, and we're in the fuels fund, then we can work towards putting together uh, contract documents and bid the projects. And ideally, I kind of align with uh, the roadmaster and the assistant roadmaster that if we can get you know those documents prepared here in January, February, um, in anticipation of the, the spring and summer construction season, I think we'll get better than nothing. Okay. So that's kind of the goal. Now, if you want to be involved in that, do you have time? Do you want to meet out on site or do you just want us to report back and I'm available? Right now we're Monday at 12 at noon. So I don't know if that will do or not, or if you want us to reschedule. No, 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 no. I'd rather this is their availability is more um Monday the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, great. Okay. Okay. Right. Yes. Where, where will you guys be meeting? Um at Sheridan Drive South. All right. Well put it in the um, chair. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh no, we could then. Yeah, we could, yeah, we could write chats. That would work out for your estimation. No, no. <laughs> At and what? At um, William Penn. Okay, sit down the road for me. I'll walk around to see his owners. Um, so I'll ask John about if, if he's if I'm not there, you understand why okay. we have dinner reservations, but um, well, we won't make you late for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want us to. No. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Are you married when you're eight? No. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Um, so, so I'm hoping to become part of the process. I guess just a, a, a question. Uh, have you just place that other beds? Um, Federal infrastructure grants. Mm -hmm. Is there any grants that would come towards me? Because uh, all of it usually seems to be federal. You know? uh, for paving projects, um, I have to give that some thought. Um, I, I think nothing comes to mind at this moment. I have been sending some things through to you folks on yeah. other, like it was one I thought might align for the, the building. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head for paving, but that's not to say there isn't any. So. That's okay. And I, I just, I, I periodically peruse the grants website. I don't think it's my off time, but I do. And and just to kind of keep my brain fresh on it. So we're thinking. Well, and again, if you see anything, you know, it's like, flag it. Right? It's, it's never a municipality. It's like, well, I was always exempt from it. So. Yeah, um, I was thinking there's some um, green light go funding from Penda, but that's all related to traffic signal. But there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, but do they need any improvements? Yeah. Um, the other one, uh, I'm on here, but there, there's another one, but I don't think that would work. It is for painting. So yeah, I'll have to just keep the radar on and keep a look out. Thank you, thank you. So I'll be hanging out with those two. I have to oh I have to get in the small truck and see if I remember how to drive six ship because that's been about 25 years from now. All right. Um next item is the Martin's landscape supply dumping permit. 
Uh, we found out that it costs $150 and not $60. Um, Butch, do you have an update for us if we could rent a Hopkins uh, chipper? Uh, no, I don't have a no okay. uh, But uh, I think I think we can lower it. Okay. Okay. But, that's okay. That's okay. But just going to find out if we could uh, use self Hopkins chipper instead of paying for this uh, um, permit that we don't quite need as of yet. Okay. Thank you. All right. The next item is equipment repairs. A motion was made at the workshop to repair the little truck windshield from John Wenzel Body Shop for the um, estimate of $1,535.94. It is leaking at the top due to a rusted cap. Another motion was made to replace the motor for the salt spreader on the little truck from Smith Metalworks for $597.81 plus shipping, uh, as, as well as shoes for the snow plow on the little truck needed to be replaced. Uh, but she had anything further to estimate? I know you said about $50, but I do know that was for the big plow. Oh, it was a little bit of getting it again. Uh, I think call store. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we can keep there even better. Yeah, I, I think all stores have gone at least four and uh, at least so. Uh, that's okay. Can, can I help you out? No, let us know. You know, please go ahead and give me the, the spinner is fixed. Okay. Uh, we have food on the truck yet, okay. and but I have everything together and, and the whole truck's going for all. Yeah, so it's repair for the body shop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On Friday after Thanksgiving, we we're supposed to take the little truck out the fries down the wet zone, and uh, um, and uh, it'll be in the shop maybe close to a week. And then, then uh, we'll have it again. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item is signs and signposts. Motions with, a motion was made to the workshop meeting to purchase 20 posts and post anchors at MSI. Okay. Oh. Anything else? Uh, there was another concerning signs. Call to the podium. I know, I know you had mentioned it to me. I could have given you. Uh, yeah. Signs, but also uh, a signpost, but also signs down at uh, Miller Municipal. Okay. So you should have something back there too. Okay. I don't have it in front of you. Forgive me. I just want an authorization. I didn't spend that much. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's... David mentions we need some other signs also. Give you a slip at the municipal, Miller Municipal plan. That was right around 500000 your signs. Do you have that? I don't know. I know. It could be a way to somewhere. I just don't have an authorization for that in the health. I cannot, can I? Because it's not an item. Well, if I was doing something, it say what's the cost? Oh, okay. What's the total not to have that? It's just acres of them, so I, what, is it what's, just? What's the total not to have that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. you're saying it's 500. It's about 1600 per sign. The post, $62. I was going to get 25. So you 62 is about $1,400. So a few so, extra receivers. Wait, 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 all right, there, there was a, a, on, my, yeah. on my topic, yeah. there, there, there was a recent yeah. Commonwealth Court case that said Catholics cannot manage the genesis, but for emergencies or de minimis items that don't involve the expenditure of money. So, so you have to sign both on your. But, 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 right, but this was also that it was approved to about 20 in the context of proving 20 posts and 26. Yeah. Whatever. Whenever you get it, we'll put them up. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Winter snow removal road crew uh, has been getting the trucks ready. And uh, uh, Sue or Melissa or both of them, all the list of farmers are ready for the snow removal. So it's 55 degrees off today. Who wants to call about snow today? Thank you. 
Terms expire in January 2024. Dennis says uh, Planning Commission will serve another term. David Stabi, Zoning Hearing Board, will serve another term. Kelly Cox, Vacancy Board Chairman, will serve another term. And John Celeste, Emergency Management Coordinator, will serve another term. Thank you, Ron, very much. Um, next item is extending the stormwater pipe along Mary Drive to Main Street. And uh, my note here says that that's being still coordinated with UGI. The project will continue spring 2024. Yeah, I just had an email today from UGI looking for some information that I previously gave them, but I was encouraged that they're at least working on it. They're designing, we're looking at what it will take to relocate their gas tank mm -hmm. so that we don't have interference with our proposed source. So I'm encouraged by that. Good. Hopefully we'll have something here sooner than later. Thank you, thank you. Next item is the Comcast franchise renewal. The motion was made at last month's meeting to have attorney McFarland uh, prepare and advertise. We'll need to have a public hearing to the top words at the December meeting. No, that's okay. Um, the next item is the Western Burks Joint Zoning Ordinance Section 4 Amendment, and this is regarding mm -hmm. keeping pets and small domesticated farm animals. Maybe updates on that. No, I, I <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Not every other municipalities want to participate. Yeah. We were only waiting for a response from North Meadowbrook solicitor who never got back to me. So I'm inclined to proceed. Okay. Yes, soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. We need to have it fixed. All right. The next item is the self Auckland Police 2024 rate increase. And this is from $4,746.61. In 2023, to $4,920 in 2024. This is for a total of $59,040. This is a normal average increase, and that goes up every year. Right. Next item is the Dutch Valley food distributors and the landscaping plans. Thank you. This is clarification here on this. Yeah, good evening. My name is Dave Meese with Eden Sons. Uh, for those of you who were on board uh, about two years ago, we approved the land development plan for Dutch Valley Foods. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, since uh, constructed most of their facilities there and have been working through improvement financial security release and everything like that. But uh, in in, uh, in their proceedings, they came across a, a landscaping issue that they wanted me to ask if the board would consider not like not requiring to install the uh, yeah, uh, answer. So, uh, if you're going to talk about the food site, I have some exhibits here. It's not too long here, but uh, this is a page from the uh, previously approved land development plan. If this is a reason to want to go and paint the landscape, some conflict, uh, they just they don't they don't like it. They don't like it. For what reason? The eight, uh, what I'm telling you is because it would create some, uh, Operational inefficiencies in terms of mowing, mulching, landscaping, those kind of issues. Were you were you the engineer on the project? I was. So it looked to me like that might have been installed or buffer for headlight, perhaps projecting on the same property. Yeah, I would say you're accurate on that. Uh, the uh, for your fingers right there is the what they park the uh, truck semi mm -hmm. and the trailer. And so there's a neighborhood dwelling right here, the yeah. Mullen Martin house. And so the idea was that would be the most impactful way to you know, put some tree in there. Yeah, uh, mitigate that. Mitigate that. Yeah, visually, noise, lights, all that. But in, in lieu of a tree line, you put up a sentence or maybe firm it to okay, prevent the headlight from hitting the house, backyard. I mean, we're just struggling with the blue. Right. You know, it's a improvement that was shown on a plan that was approved by the township after being presented by the owner. And now we just don't want to do it. And again, we don't have the history if, you know, this resident came in, voiced a concern, and something was, you know, done to address the concern. And now we're just going to eliminate it. Right. And 
I, wish, I wish I had some more information, but uh, unfortunately, I, I I was I was uh voluntold to come to meeting tonight. Yeah, uh, I mean, give it give it a try. You know? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, to your point, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I think uh, slats and fence would be a much more effective screen than the yeah. our providers that are proposed there because uh, topographically, where those are planted is about five or six feet lower than the edge of the pavement. There's a there's a bank. Oh, there. okay. So okay. I have some pictures too. If you'd like to see them, how all the path ones here. These, these kind of correspond to the uh, the red the red uh, key oh, six arrow right there on the yeah. exhibit I gave you. Yeah. yeah. So, so where the trees are shown, it's lower, but up against the curb line, if a fence was there, Correct. that would be up higher. That would be you know, a fence. Would, than that. I would agree with that. So is that oh wait they already have a fence. Well, they're, they're oh, they're okay. Okay. That's, that's, yeah but that doesn't come down across oh. in front of this area it seems like correct the security fence would be okay. up on the uh, up on the pavement the retaining wall and area. yeah the fence is on top of that wall. So you know, you, if you look to like maybe two or three there, you'll see it. Uh, so, really so is it that looks like a chain link fence? Or what about putting um, slats in the chain link fence? That would be a very effective screen, in my opinion. Yeah, great. Yeah, I, I think I think we need an alternative to landscaping versus just eliminating the yep. landscaping. I think that is a perfectly understandable question. Okay, if you have. I start probably having conversations with the affected property owner. Uh, Dale Brubaker to reach out to the Mark, Mr. Martin. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to connect with him the day before he left town. So I don't know if he was able to. If there, yeah, I, I guess we're going to ask if, there, if there's an alternative, perhaps the board would be open. But we also want to ensure that the property privacy is maintained. Sure. And the trees, you know, I'll put you that yep. as well. Yep. Yeah, what I can do is uh, go back to the Dutch Valley and Dale and say, this is what the board is suggesting that we maybe come up with an alternative proposal for treaty, have some uh, acknowledgement from the neighbor, and then present that back to you to see if that would be an acceptable alternative. Yep. Yep. And then once they're installed, then we could consider the letter of credit. Reduction. Yep. And you know, it was a minor amount, six thousand dollars or something. Is there is there any other improvements that were completed to make it uh, more no. okay? I, I was just looking to make it a more substantial reduction. Well, we can if, evaluate that. I I've been a little bit out of the loop with their guarantee you finish these yeah, years. like what they have finished versus what was established. Yeah, they, or, there may be, I think you've already released some. I think so too. Uh, I think I don't the know previous engineer might have done that, but I'm just saying to make it worth your while. You know, if the slats could get installed, and if there's other improvements, then maybe we can, you know, make it a more yep. substantial reduction if indeed the work has been completed. Sounds very good. Yeah, it looks like you have a balance. So Sue just handed uh, some information from January 12th of 2023. That there looks like there's three hundred forty-six thousand dollars still. Right, and most of that was, I think, was uh, uh, related to the uh, long-term eighteen-month bond period. Uh, um, previous has been here was a little. Yeah, I don't understand why bond um, the private improvements, but that's what the previous engineer did. Yeah, you know, it's not being dedicated to the town. I don't think it needs to be bond. Thank you. I have a different initiative. Oh, I can't have it. See how quick that drive you get. All right. Otherwise, if you have any questions, thank you for your time. And we want to see you back in the next show. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Let's not accept the previous engineer. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, like, it took me my mind also. If this person sells, 
it's also the next homeowner, like it's yeah. yeah. So the condition are there, this homeowner might be okay with, but then yeah, sure but then if, if, if the screen's there and the truck parking is there, the next person comes in, they see what's there, they yeah. buy it. There's yeah. also nothing preventing that property from yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy, easy piece. Yeah, whatever can be done to keep them happy, let them know. We're yeah. very fortunate to have him in our township, and we appreciate yeah. that. And there's not any erosion issue. Where the no, the picture looks like it's all good together. Yeah. Thank you. They're pretty, uh, uh, pretty uh, how it works. Building by the last of the year. So, so it's so just getting back to us. Yeah, with an obvious solution, they will work. Very, very fair. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, next week. All right. So the next item is the uh, Best Best Valley again. Uh, there's a letter of credit reduction request number two. Yeah, I think you the... Yes. Okay. So that was with respect to this tree. Yep. Okay. We're going to move on. Uh, the next thing is the zoning hearings. So this is 4050 Conrad Advisor Parkway. A variance application has been received. The property owner would like to open a used car lot that is now zoned to town center, where a used car lot is not with permitted use. Um, this isn't the same thing. There's a two and I understand Chuck, you had sent an email. Yeah, uh, go ahead. And I, I, I didn't have a chance to review it. That's okay. Um, yeah, it was, you know, Quick look at the application, and we identified some review comments that could also be considered or passed so the hearing board for potential conditions if they're so inclined mm -hmm. to agree. Um, this, but I think the so, attorney well, has something here. Well, it's just I have a I can outline your options. Okay, yeah. you can buy letter recommend approval. You can buy letter recommend denial. Okay. You can authorize the professionals to attend in opposition, or you can write a letter, uh, you know, allowing the zoning hearing board to do what it wants, but requesting that to the extent that the relief is granted, that certain conditions be imposed. So those are your options based upon the letter that you have in front of you from the CE review the application. It's all because. It didn't function as you used to call out for certain months. When they, when they, it was a non conforming use of the property. But since it was there before the zoning was adopted, it was allowed mm -hmm. to operate. Once they ceased operations for more than a 12 month period, mm -hmm. you relinquish you that value of pre existing non conforming yeah. under the zoning ordinance. Can this be some excellent meeting? No, no, because we hear it's scheduled for other seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, one, one question I have for you based upon the letter. Are they proposing any improvements? No, the, the application said no improvement, but okay. but to me, I think there's some issues with that site. Uh, and and one that comes to, the first thing that comes to mind is there, there's some bollards there. If it would or not, the drive by tonight, we will see. But you know, the access in and off the state road really isn't defined. So, one of the comments was that you know, they should have a, you know, highway occupancy. But from well, what, would, what would trigger that if not when involved? In? Well, again, I think it's, it's important that we have safe vehicular access in and out of that property. Um, if it's going to be established, reestablished as a car lot. And right now, I don't know if it is safe because it, it's, un, it's undefined. You know, it's like a free for all. Um, and PennDOT certainly doesn't you know, allow that condition to happen where you have to see a pavement at either end of those bollard areas. Um, you know, we'll be coming and going with for pleas in essence. The, the other issue I, I think is the small office building that's there, which we understand there may not be any, any restroom facilities. So how does an employee or even be looking to purchase a car if they have to use a restroom? Um, you know, there's there's nothing available for 
Now this property is, is in this area in car lot is very slender. I don't think there's room for an online system. But I believe the, the property, the owner also has the hotel and the restaurant. So perhaps, you know, some arrangement could be in it, you know, yes, the employee in the car lot, the um, patron of the car lot could use the restaurant, restaurant facility. I don't know. Yeah. Because it is all on one property. It's got multiple uses on one property. So basically, until conditions are met, which would make the property safe for the use they intended to use for, then it's not a good location for what they want to do. And yes. that's, that's the bottom line. And so I would be inclined to, if unless and until they make the necessary improvements to make it safe, then I wouldn't approve. And and just what would the zoning hearing board do that same thing? So, well, so, you, you don't know. And that's why I think you don't know, but the, the, the zoning hearing board will be. Way to the townships, which I mean, ultimately, the zoning hearing board is an independent body that can make its own decision free from the recommendation of this board. But typically, zoning hearing boards do put substantial weight on the desire of yeah, because the board of supervisors could be have a very good board. I think they're. Intelligent enough well, to make so, their own decision. So my, my baseline recommendation on zoning metrics is that sending this professionals is very expensive and time consuming. Usually the board can trust the zoning hearing board to do the right thing. Typically, a letter outlining the board's position is, is sufficient. Yeah. And so see this, so the listener who represents the board. Could draft a cover letter and attach our letter to it. Correct. Correct. So you're going to say that letter that says we trust that you're judging. No, no, no. no, no. You, 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 would, you would send a letter saying basically, you know, if you're inclined, if the zone here board is inclined to approve this application, we recommend you consider the items in the. And impose the following condition. Yeah. Or alternatively, we, we, oppose, we oppose the relief. But to the extent it's granted, these are the conditions that we want imposed. Yes, yeah, whichever way you want. Yeah. Yes. I, I so you can say you oppose it because of these yeah. these reasons, or you can say hey, we're okay if you want to so, approve it if you consider these. But but, 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 yeah. but you can also say we oppose, but to the extent you grant it, we want these conditions and then we cover in both cases. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. So see, I mean, I see think it's and, an insult. Important. No, no, because it's, it's just, just the board of supervisors can always become a party right. to that zone in case. Just if something may not be familiar with on this particular location. So, number one is easy and safe access on and off to the highway. Number two is bathroom for patient usage. You mentioned there's some bottles. Well, and I think I think I had. Yeah, I mean, Mike Brewer and I worked on this yeah. for my office as only officer on this. So we have 14 different items here. Then the letter. Exactly. So with a cover letter okay. from Colin on behalf of the board. Yes. He could reference this, and I think the way you posed it would be the appropriate way. Yes. And you, you have to you have to remember, Jim, that the zoning hearing board, unless protestants, you know, nearby residents appear. The only people that they're going to be hearing from are the applicants or the applicant. So, you know, this it can support their decision if they want to you know, vote against what is being proposed. It's a, it's a piece of evidence that they can use to hang them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, Mike Moore from my office will be at the hearing okay. as the zoning office because the zoning solicitor would probably rely on. His testimony in this letter, but I think it's even more important that the board offer their opinion one way or the other regarding the application. Thank you. And certainly, so you folks may have more concerns for something other than what was outlined here. So, so in that case, you'll you'll want a, a motion authorizing the solicitor to prepare a letter to the zoning hearing board. With the position that it opposes the relief 
although to the extent that the zone territory grants the relief, we want conditions imposed that address all of the concerns in SDE's letter. I'd like to make that motion and I'll just slightly detailed for us. Second. Jim, second. Roll call. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. You just want the positions off and that's it. It was detailed. And then you just move forward. My position is if you put people on that board because we wanted them on there because of their intelligence and their well, now you're telling them, well, just in case you weren't you weren't smart enough to figure this out. But that's not it. That's not it. Any, any, any resident in the town or any for that case and offer testimony what happened. advertise and they want to be there. Yeah. Be there. And, but that includes the board of supervisors too. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times, like, these things do run the planning they, commission. I appreciate everything you put in there. I'm sure that they will too. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Do whatever you do. Yeah. And a lot of this is how it runs zoning applications through planning commission. You know, their recommendations, yeah. board of supervisors, they get those, their recommendation. And then they provide letters to the zoning hearing board, either in support, recommending denial, or support with conditions, as that Colin outlined. So this is not, you know, questioning the zoning hearing board. It's offering them, it's offering them assistance to evaluate this application. Right. So then the next property is uh, 39 to and what would be small growth? So on the text it says that now it's looking at 158 small. So yeah, that's the real agency. 39 to be like the info. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah. yeah. So that is a they would like to install a double wide trailer that approaches on the set times. Yeah. That that lot is really configured rather oddly that you when you apply all the setbacks, you end up in a little tiny triangular area. The, the key to me would be that you try and minimize the relief needed, you know, either on one side against the existing home. More likely that would be the side I would say you'd want to try and honor and keep the home away from. It's so this a lot. weird for that, that strange property. This is a Peter and Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. The lot they brand learned in the Siri had a building for me. She's going to be building the foundation. And then he decided to sell the property. The lodgings have to be So there is some hardship there just based on the configuration of the property. I don't know. Whatever happened to the building? That's it. Okay, good. So I would not, I don't think you need to take a position. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Thanks, sir. Take a switch. Yeah. Let me do that. Yeah. The car lot was odd because it's in the same property, restaurant, hotel, and, and it involves a new a use variance, which is yeah. different from the bench. And that was a weird, uh, weird set of things. Thank you. Next item is uh, the appointment of uh, secretaries. Uh, we did interview a number of individuals, and uh, we have two ideal candidates. We don't need to take motions on this, but there's no motion to take on this this evening, is there? Um, who do we have in here for motion? Um, are we are we appointing an assistant secretary? Now? We're going to speak. We're, we're, we're trying to hire. We're, hire. Hire. Well, we're having two individuals come in. This is what I wanted to ask you. Um, you're going to invite them to start training as soon as possible in the next two weeks. And um, when both Melissa and Sue leave to fill in their positions. So, what would be the proper thing here to make a motion to hire them? Uh, well, have they, have they have you extended employment offers? To we haven't done anything other than tell them that we're interested in interviewing more individuals. Yes, so we're interested in, so you have a decision. We were thinking about doing that this evening. So we're pretty much narrowed down to two candidates that we'd like to hire. 
you like to hire both or one of them? Both as a release. Both so the manual is a So in so in that in that case, you'd want motion authorizing Sue or yourself to extend an all public employment to these two people. I guess uh, just a question for you. Are we able to notify them and let them become, although there's not a formal paper document, is it acceptable to let them know that there's a 90 day probationary period? Of course, is that a handbook? Yeah. We, handbook? we are working on that has not been formalized. What what is the consequence of information and career? Until their benefits vest or so so I I guess I'll just say this. Yeah. Your probation period is in name only because these employees are at well. So so to the extent you're dissatisfied with their performance in two weeks, right. you have the right to terminate. Right. Right. Even so though that's of a comp. I, I, I would yeah. recommend that you put the off of employment in writing just to memorialize it. And that should be well, but that, that's what I would recommend. I would recommend uh, a vote authorizing extending these two people's these two people uh offer them employment in writing. Um, you can advise advise them in the letter that their employment is at will. That's it's better than even saying that they have a yeah. period, which, yeah. which suggests some vesting of which, which the people wouldn't have. Um, I guess my next question is when we usually set the rate to of pay that is done at the January meeting, correct? Avery? Or in the budget. Isn't it in your, wasn't it the calendar one? Yeah. 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 Which that's five hour range. Okay. And uh, we need to um, have their names for this motion, correct? You should. Sure? Okay. Yes. I don't remember Valerie's last name. Drumella. Mm -hmm. Okay, just remember it. Thank you. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to offer employment to both Valerie Drumheller and Lisa Taggerly as uh, assistant secretaries. At the <laughs> As at will employees. As at will employees. At the hourly wage rate of. At the hourly wage rate of seventeen fifty an hour. For each person. For each person. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. I haven't met either one of them without trouble. Roll call, Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. We uh we Thank had you. a very long interview with both of these individuals. It was it was pretty we interviewed three people. Um uh very pleasant interviews with, with, with everyone. It's very different than what we did previously. Yeah, you know, no, we we all sat around and and the reason being it, that we that we want to say there's this 90 day period is because we want them to come into the office. We were kind of going back and forth saying, Hey, we'd like you to start coming at these times, we're gonna have to finalize this at the meeting. But we'd like it to come in maybe two hours a day so that they can get most of their work done. They can coordinate with the two new people and this way go through the process of training so they don't have what happened to school. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, set, set those expectations in place. Yep. Yep. We will. So, that, so they can make a decision about whether the job fits their right. lifestyle. Right. Right. And, and that was part of the discussion um, when we were sitting down with them. And it was very interesting the dynamic that went on. Um, with them versus some of the other individuals that, that it just didn't seem, um, they offered up a lot of information and it was a very, I thought it had some back and forth. It was great having the three of us sit with them. And so we hope that we have a good fit here with this way we know we don't run into the situation we had previously and someone could come on. There's no way anyone's going to fill Sue's shoes, but come on. No, people think, you know, everybody in town, you know, every spirit of this town, but that people can come on and and and, and I'm just gonna make a motion that yeah. you can't leave. Yeah. <laughs> I think it watch the 
Yes. So okay, I, I would I would specify that in, in the offer letter that these people are going to be part time employees, and I would draft it in a way that sets expectations with the thinking ahead in the future because these people are going to rely on the representation that we've made in that letter. Absolutely. So I'll I'll send out an email then. Okay. And we have everything Colin said before to sort of listen to it again. <laughs> Maybe on yeah, because it is also there so it isn't a formal written contract. So I just want to make sure that we're doing everything that we need to do. And hopefully we're going to have two individuals that are better trained and uh can can fill the roles. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, and, and help us move forward and help us continue to do what we have been doing and kind of being the kind of on training meal so that. People move into the slot, they know the job tasks are, and we can move forward rather than reinventing the wheel every time someone new walks in the doors. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you very much for your course. And I'm assuming Sue will be available for a period of not less than one year <laughs> to come in and offer this in one year. Well, well there's, there's so much to do that it's acceptable for something else. Right. But the space is a big issue, the building's a big issue, um, the roads are always an issue. And every time we think we've got something, you know, done, you know, it just kind of pops up. And so, I, I think during my discussion with them, we're trying to get them. Sue is so dedicated to to being here and being with us, and you kind of want that feel of a person, you know, when when they come on board. Unfortunately, so many jobs are are not about that anymore. Not saying the loyalty, but about just like interested in what you're doing and so yeah right right and and so so like I said the individuals you spoke to um seem to kind of have that air about them that they were like hey you know yeah I do kind of want to be here this fits the hours that I need this fits kind of like you know where I'm at in my life kind of a thing what they share with us we even ask them those questions they offer a lot of information so so I'm hoping it's going to be kind of work in hand and know how to each kind of know how to do yeah. everything and we can share the yeah. Yeah. more than yeah. Yeah. And, and so yeah, 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 the yeah. yeah. And Sue so even um uh, said uh, she'd stick around if we were so lucky possibly there's so much filing that it's on. Yes. And uh well, we guess why don't we have a short round of subdivisions? We have to file many people's names. Most people don't know the first people. Yeah, yeah. The file goes by street address. Right. That's the test. And then, you know, many other times, that's where it's at. So you can do that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's going to have her own for something for us. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I guess uh on our uh, supervisor's comments that you not feeling too happy with this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make something of it. Just let you know, Larry, um at uh, the beginning of the meeting here, uh, there's checks that were sent out um in October that no one so I spoke to Kathy and she told she told me she's gonna take a look at that check. That was that extra fifty five hundred that was sent as as a donation. That was that check that was sent out. So she's gonna keep an eye out for it. I told her I was gonna pull. If it's not received, I'm gonna write a new check. Oh. So if she asks about it, all all our checks that I mailed out that week didn't get to their location. So I just I'm well, frustrated. My folks someone at the post office. She said, "Yep, it happens this time of year." And you know, a bunch of people like, yep, yeah, this is the time of year it seems to happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but it, it happens a lot last year. Last year, there was a lot of checks that were received late. And I sent everything out like a day after it was the checks, you know, I, whatever. You know, I do my job and. And, and it's everywhere. It's yeah. We didn't get mail for a week and a half. Yeah. And we were, what's going on? Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, yeah. we piled for yeah, what I'll, what I'll try to do mm -hmm. that you know, if I have been a week or so, we both come here, I'll make sure that I physically need to do the checks so that one of you feel comfortable with that. So, yeah, all right. Um, the report for October, um, let me see, there's there was uh seven EMS and fire advisories, uh, nine traffic stops, 
20 citations issued. Wow. Uh, six traffic accidents and uh, three security checks. Um, there's uh, some other data. Um, any, have, anyone in uh, else? Thank you again, you guys. It was doing a fantastic job. You guys are wonderful. So, and the, the, I don't know if you're here either, the LSA grant for equipment has been, will be submitted. And so we're looking forward to that. We're crossing our fingers that you guys, we can help you guys get some more equipment. And the teaser thing, we approved at last meeting. So that, that will go through as well. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, thank you all the time for all the things that you do. So, oh, yes, we did some. So um, the only thing I'm just talking about is uh, we met with the Olson group again, and that's the uh, architect firm that's going to help us work on the building. And it's been a really nice uh, project that he put together. I, I'm, I'm just so pleased that he wants input from residents and our little, I guess, study group, what would you call it? Advisory mm -hmm. the grassroots community. It is really nice because getting input from, you know, someone that lives in town, someone that lives out of town. I'm from, you know, another section and Melissa's our young person that gives us, you know, and it, it just, it's nice. We, again, we try to be forward thinking and thinking of, you know, if we're going to go ahead and do new building to have this building be the building that lasts for a hundred years or more, if we can. Um, and just to kind of think outside the box too, of how it's going to be used as a community resource, because like, right, that's that's my focus. We want it as a community resource. Along with that, we're going to hopefully be redoing the park and, and have a lot of access for people within the town to use the building and the facility. So um, I guess that's about the only other thing and other than the check mishap that just haunts me at night. Mm -hmm. um, now, thank you again to everyone. And Jim, thank you again for your service. I'm assuming you're not going to be with us for the December meeting, so we'll miss you. Um, happy holidays and whatnot. So, yeah. Will there be a speech now? Well, Kirk, I'm going to apologize for sneezing and blowing my nose tonight. We're packing, we're packing the house. And you cannot believe how much dust has been accumulated on grapes and picture frames and everything else. Uh, yeah. I told my grandson, I said, what's this? I said, look, not close. <laughs> I do want to thank everybody for the opportunity to serve the township. Uh, I've enjoyed working with Irene. She's extremely professional and puts in a lot of time that doesn't, she doesn't get compensated for it because she doesn't want to be. Right. And Peter, who does the same thing, and Peter is one of the most intelligent young people I've he met is. in a long time. Yeah. I uh, also want to thank Sue and Melissa for the outstanding job they do to take care of the township and their professionalism. And Butch and Dave and your crew, uh, you guys don't get, don't get the accolades that you deserve, that's for sure. Our police department, Larry, You've done a great job in town as a chief and the rest of the department. We appreciate you very much, and I'm going to miss you guys. The MTCA, Kelly, and the board. Uh, I wish that we could have done more this year to help with the playground, but with all these plans that are going on, I'm sure that will be addressed at some point. Uh, Chuck, you have been a, a welcome addition to the, to the board. And, Helping you, helping us with all the things that need done. And Colin, again, one of the most intelligent, likable, well dressed young men that we've met here in a long time. Uh, Andy should be very proud of the job you've done. And I'll miss Andy too, but you, know, you, you really are quite extraordinary. Thank you. And I, if I ever need an attorney, I know who to call. And if I ever need an engineer, <laughs> and I hope at least I don't need to call. Yeah, you're always welcome to come back and visit. Well, you can sit here at the end. Peter told me I can sit back and have more people. I can take you up on that. It would be fun. Yeah, I can have more you. <laughs> but I do want to thank everybody and the citizens that had faith in me to put me on the board. I wish I could have found a home in uh, Township to stay, but there just was nothing available. And the home that we found is just about what we need. Uh, downsized a little bit, but it has everything that you didn't have here. And so it's, it's a plus. But I will miss everybody. I want to thank all of you for your friendship. And uh, 
wish you the best of holidays. And, and I hope that my my successor will do an excellent job and probably not quite as argumentative as I. Mm -hmm. No, you know, that's okay. <laughs> Should be able to point of view. It's not good to always be in agreement. It's good to, it's good to have that perspective because you're taking in everyone's opinion, and that's why I do enjoy this talk very much. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Why can't follow up on that, but I will say that uh, appreciation of the efficient manner in which this meeting has been conducted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have nothing else to add. I spoke slowly. Thank you, Sherry. It's hard. I know, I know. I tried something. Because it's tricky to get it. I only have one update for the board, which is that the injunction action against the property owners of 1117, where the pen has been commenced, uh, the sheriff is currently attempting to serve the petition upon property owner and the Now, are we able to get a report? Well, if these associated actions, so, it's really like a list. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, the fees are recoverable. We case. can we can yeah. reclaim them in a district court action. Yeah. This this action before the court of please asks the judge to enter an order mandating that the property owner refrain from keeping his land in this condition. We can then go to the district justice with a complaint requesting attorney's fees for all costs related to enforcement. And that would include craft? Uh, no, no that, that, that will not include craft. Only attorney's fees are okay. recoverable under the NBC. Okay. So they, have, they haven't appealed the notices issued in August which are the ultimate basis for the petition. There would also be the basis by which we proceed before district court. And I presume the amount of bonds will be in the five figures by the time we want to wait until this until this injunction action is fully litigated because we want all the fees from it to be included in any order entered by district justice. Thank you. How far back in time would you go? It, it, so well, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can go back to the entry of the last order by the district justice because we resolved the last case for fifteen hundred or sorry two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that covered that covered these over mm -hmm. six or seven months that the case was prosecuted. Mm -hmm. uh, I anticipate that my fees will be more than that. Two thousand dollar number that we previously obtained by the court. Again, I think five or ten thousand dollars is a likely figure before the district justice. It's just, oh. so it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. It's just clean up your room, you know, clean up your room. That's all this is. And, and I, I will say, uh, the case was assigned to Judge Medius. Uh, I had presented and argued. These types of cases in front of him before, and typically he has sided strongly in favor of municipality. It's good. I mean, obviously, he's going to make an independent decision in this case, but he respects the authority of the municipality and is trying to enforce the property. Have so. the neighbor been notified that they can participate in this? So, the, so we're we're proceeding on behalf of the right? Yeah, we're proceeding in in the public good, right? So we we basically represent those people that haven't been notified. No, what we're speaking. For. You were thinking about having to Yeah. Well, to the to the, judge too. to the extent that the matter goes to a hearing, the kind of time to reach out to those people and ask them to testify. Yes. Is it necessary given the amount of sunny visits that Jeff Hogan made? Probably not, but those people do have, you know, they're concerned and we fuck for his neighbors and their testimony is just be compelling. So if it gets to I, these matters don't typically re reach the level of a hearing, uh, but if it does, yes, the township can contact 
the object the problem was not to get any new witnesses. So do you have any comments? Not really, just thanks to Jim. Maybe it's um, good and interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I guess we can uh, conclude the meeting. I'll make a motion. What time should I use for use this time? 8.33. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.33 p.m. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm going to Thank you.